Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet shitlords. And of course, the moment I start recording is when it starts to pour torrential rains yet again. We've been having some really crazy, almost couple of weeks because of like, there was some weird weather event that happened on the coast of Brazil. But anyway, <laughs> I'm trying not to get too distracted here because I want to get this done quick. Um, because I have some very good news, which nevertheless is also causing an enormous amount of work that I have finally received the proof PDF to, to, to do the last proofreading run of Baptism of Fire, okay? And I can tell you this, the layout, the art, the, the, the structure of it is fantastic. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing so far. Right now I have to meticulously look over everything paragraph by paragraph to try to find any typos. And of course, there'll still be a whole bunch of typos in there at the end. That's just always how it works. But, uh, yeah, I'm working on that right now. I'm like at page, I don't know what it is, page 180 or no, page 115 or something like that of, of, of like 350. I, I don't know how, how large the book is. Yeah, I don't remember. But anyway, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm kind of a zombie because of it, because of how much I've been trying to get through. But, uh, but once I'm done that, it'll be sent for the, for the print proof to drive through. Which means that in two or three weeks, maybe four, Baptism of Fire will be available. All right? All, 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 anything unexpected notwithstanding. Right? <laughs> Let, let's, maybe I shouldn't have jinxed myself there. I don't know. Anyway, today I'm going to talk again about Daggerheart. You've already seen that I did a live stream basically about what a horrible person Matt Mercer is. That was before I even heard of Daggerheart, but, uh, well, I'd heard of it, but I hadn't given it any consideration. And then, like, the, my previous video was basically about how Daggerheart is making use of story game stuff. And, and I said in that video, it's very clear, some people in the comments were acting like, like I somehow hadn't been. I said it very clearly. I haven't even looked at the book. I'm looking at this material here that has been shown as a sample from from the book on X, and, and I believe that it is correct. It was real. That's really in the, the play test, right, in the, of, the, of, the, of Daggerheart. Um, and I was commenting only on that, but that was enough for me to realize this game was going to be trash. The thing is, though, I didn't realize just how much trash it was really going to be. Now, some of you no doubt have clicked because of the, the title that I put on this. I want to make... To make I, I want to make it clear, for those of you who are purely, like... Um, social conservatives or something like that, that, that we're only here waiting to see where the, you know, uh, where, where, where the dysphoria is or something like that. Uh, when I said it has an identity problem, it, I'm not referring to, like, gender identity here. What I'm saying is something way more interesting. Actually, I think, now having looked at it more carefully, that Daggerheart could easily be the worst design game of 2024 in terms of major games, right? Games that are actually going to sell, but, but are, are terrible, terrible games. Um, but the way that it could be the most, the worst of all is, is actually very interesting. Because it's not just bad mechanics. In fact, the game, technically, it's not an unplayable game or something like that. Like, you could actually play it. The problem is that you wouldn't know what you're playing it for, and neither do the people that made it or anybody else, right? Um, this game has an, an identity issue. Um, it doesn't know what it's meant to be. Now, this, the, the backstory of this all is that when the OGL 1.1 fiasco happened, and, and Wizards was basically trying to extort money from Critical Role, and both of those being groups that want money, they, they, they could not come to any agreement, um, I'm guessing. The Critical Role people just decided, screw it, we'll make our own games, right? And so they got this guy <laughs> named Spencer Stark, who I think is also the guy who made Candela Obscura. And, there, and so he is in the running for being like the, the worst game designer of all time, right? Like this is a guy who, who clearly, I mean, not really, because there are some, some, some awful games that don't even, you know, should even be in a, that are in a category of their own, right? This guy hasn't written Fatal, right? Or, you know, any number of other um, terrible games. And again, I'm, I'm not saying the game is not technically playable, right? But this is very clearly someone who has almost no understanding of how game design should work. Because it, honestly, if Spencer Stark 
had made a board on a wall and just filled it with random mechanics and ideas, mostly from story gaming, and then just threw darts to see which ones would be in the book, um, which may in fact have been his design process, for all we know. It certainly looks like it could have been. It, it would have been equally bad. Right. And Sp besides this, I will comment that Spencer Stark, if you do, a, if you Google image search him, and please don't harass him or do anything mean to him, certainly not on my account. Um, but but if you if you were to look at the guy, you would immediately see just what you know, like just, just, you'd know exactly what you're into, you know. Um, so yeah, the the, the guy, uh, it, it's it would certainly be plausible that this that this was just done with a dartboard, you know. Um, and this is the real problem. So when I say that it's got a, a, a massive identity problem, what I mean to say first and foremost is what was it made for, right? Like when you're making, when, so this is going to be a more, in some ways it's going to be a lecture on game design here. Because when you're making an RPG, you have to know what you're making it for. What's the real reason this RPG should exist, right? So um, if, if, for, for example, one thing you have to consider is do you want it to make money or not, obviously. Um, because you could say, I don't care at all. I'm, I honestly don't care at all if it makes any money. I just want to do this because I like this idea. Fine. If you do want it to make money, you have to make it certain ways, right? Um, if the, Another question is like, what, you know, what purpose does it fulfill, right? If you're like, well, this is exactly like D&D, &D, but I've changed the encumbrance rules. Okay. Then basically your pro your product serves no purpose, right? And and you're you 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 designed a fantasy heartbreaker, right? Um, it doesn't matter how good those encumbrance rules are. It's not really you could just do a a supplement, a third party D and D supplement presenting your encumbrance rules, right? Um, and you have to say, well, is this game meant to be a focused on a certain thing, for example, on a certain style of play, on a certain genre? Is it meant to be designed for being played quickly and easily? Is it meant to be really complex with a lot of rules mastery in it? Um, is it meant to be a game where the, the player characters engage themselves interactively with uh, the adventure? Is that with the, with, the, with the story, let's say, or something like that? You know, like if it was a story game. Uh, is it, or is it something where... Um, you want the DM to be able to be the one that crafts these sophisticated stories, like like you know the World of Darkness crap, uh, <laughs> or you know what 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 is the purpose of the game, right? And essentially, I think here the the real problem is not so much a dysphoria as it is a um, a schizophrenia, I guess you'd say, or a multiple identity disorder. Is that Dagger Heart was created to do multiple different things and cannot do all those things at the same time, right? This is the problem with making games that, that, that you're, when, when you've got an agenda behind, b besides the game itself, right? Because almost none of it is about the game itself being a good game for any specific thing. But the game is supposed to do certain things, right? If, first of all, it's, it's got to be and this is, I think, probably the closest core of what it was meant to be, which is that it's, it's got to be different from D&D yet still have D&D elements, not because the, they're, they're big fans of D&D, but because D&D is the system that they have used until now in Critical Role, and, and you need to have something that isn't too wildly different than that, or the gamer half of people, or quarter, or however many are left now that are still Critical Role fans, will be less likely to be into it, right? Um, at the same time, it has to be different enough that you don't get sued by WotC by it, right? And which, which is actually, it doesn't have to be very much different at all because WotC just, you know, they, they, made, they made almost everything Creative Commons now. So they could have done a D&D &D clone and be done with it, right? But they didn't really want to do that. They didn't want to go that far because they figured that would sell less because then people would know, oh, I could just keep doing stuff, CR stuff with, with one D and D or a fifth edition, right? Uh, so they want something sufficiently different, but not too different. And that's where you get the first big problem, right? Because parts of this game are still basically D and D, right? There are still classes, there are still races, there's still um, elements even of the dice rolling, in spite of the the parts with the D twelves and all of that, um, that that are still going from D and D. But there are other parts that very much aren't 
And those two parts do not necessarily work out compatibly. It's like the, the designer just said, okay, I'll slash this, slash that, slash that. Now, on the other hand, we'll add this, this, and this. Let's just patch it all together, right? So it looks like a, a goddamn Frankenstein monster. Right? It, it, and, and some of it is not going to work. It's not been designed intelligently. It's just been patched together, you know? Um, besides that, there was another priority, which was... To, to make the game something that is very suitable to be played by Critical Role in their shows, and that people playing it would be able to play it like Critical Role plays it in their shows, right? Because this is for the fandom, and this is a perfectly reasonable thing to, to expect, just like the first one was too. But the problem is, unless you've got a really good game designer, you're going to run into big troubles, and this guy <laughs> is not a good game designer, right? Um, so they, they wanted, perhaps, uh, the game to have a more narrative element because, you know, CR is full of people who are basically actors and therefore useless at almost any other thing, and, and they might as well work on their strengths, right? Um, so, great, right? And there are some things there that have these kind of narrative elements, but, but the mechanics of the game fundamentally end up working against that. I'm going to be very curious to see how it goes for them in actual play, I mean, I'm not going to actually see it, probably. I might watch a couple of minutes of it, but I can barely stand watching Critical Role, but um, I might watch a little bit just to see, but I'm, I'm sure somebody else will just tell me, which is the nice thing about being the RPG funded, uh, and then I'll, uh, they'll show me some clip or whatever, and then I'll know, right? Um, but I think that they're going to run into some real trouble, because what they've got is a game that is clearly meant in some way to be narrative, but it's also got the, it also has the mechanical parts of D&D, and it has elements of a third thing that both of those are obstacles to the, to the narrative part of it. And the third thing is that it needs to be something that can be used as a, as a product, as, as merchandising, and as a merchandising tool. Okay? So... This, this game uh, has little tokens, it has cards, they work for different things, the dice do different stuff, um, and especially, you know, the tokens and the cards are clearly, that's going to be something that they're going to try to do, like, expansion sets and things like that, right? Like, this is pr product creation, right? It's, to, it's something that they're hoping they're going to be able to, to sell through merchandising further on. But having, like, the cards, for example, from what I understood... The cards essentially play no purpose, but they're a decoration, and you're supposed to show them when you use the power that is on the card. But it's not like a, it's not like a card game. You're not tapping the card. You're not activating the card. You, you, it, the cards are merely decorative, right? But they're there, and you're supposed to have them, and they're clearly there for marketing, and so they're going to try to use them in the game, and that's going to... You know, that, that, that's one of the things that gets in the way of doing the narrative elements, because you've got to remember... And then you have to, like, invoke the tokens, and then the token can cause a an action, and then the, the DM can possibly activate a DM move, right, which is bullshit out of story gaming again. And so all of that gets in the way of doing like a, if you want to make a really narrative game, like for live action recording of playing this game, you need something that's very rules light, right? Now, most story games are not very rules light because that's not actually what they're there for. They're not there for being narrative of the moment, right? They're being, they're there for like you're, like in story games people can, can do an entire story game without role playing their character once they don't need to the character is completely divorced from them so using a story gaming mechanics in something like this in a narrative game where the idea i would imagine for critical role and for their fans is that the most important thing you're doing is acting and emoting and expressing your character talking in the character's voice and and doing all this dramatic bullshit with your character rather than focusing a lot of times on working out token negotiations, GM moves, or, or cards. But that's what you've got in this game. <laughs> so you've got something that's going to be blocking their main process in the, in the video. But the, those, those things are also there for certain reasons, part of which are marketing, part of which are trying to, to satiate um, the, the, the difference with wizards and yet still, be, to still contain some of the D&D elements. You know, it's actually, they're, they're really, they're, the, the system is way too crunchy for almost any of their goals.
you know, the, the only reason it's that crunchy is because of this combination of these, these story game elements and these merchandising um, tokens and concepts, you know, these mer merchandising products, tchotchkes, I guess you'd say, that, 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 are, um, that they're going to be trying to sell, you know. And that's, that's not a really good functional idea. Um, it, it, and, and the crunch of it is largely there just to kind of add gimmickry to it and to, to, to do something a little different and to sell more tokens and cards, you know. Uh, so it, it's very badly thought, thought out. It's very badly thought out. And that's because they don't actually have anyone that's there. Now, okay, for those of you heroic social conservatives that, have, that came in here expecting that I was going to talk about transgender people or something, and that would be, uh, and, and that, have, that have nevertheless, once I already told you at the beginning it wasn't about that, uh, have soldiered on and stayed with me, I will give you something else. I can't give you transgender stuff, but I can give you uh, safety tools and X cards, right? Because obviously that is another thing that they have in this game. And how are they not going to? Because virtue signaling is hugely important to Critical Role and Matt Mercer. Vir he virtue signaled his way to giving $25,000 to Hamas, right? So he is, he is a huge virtue signaler. Um, his, his virtue signaling will no doubt serve to kill many young Israeli men and women. Yeah. <laughs> so the, 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 they are going to be all of those safety tool elements on top of everything else. And the combination, by the way, of these safety tools, the lines and veils and all this bullshit, the X card crap and all of that, right? is along with the fact that in the game there's like no order to it, right? Like there's no initiative system and the loudest, fastest talking person is going to therefore dominate. It's going to be horrifying, right? So, so there, there, the, the game will also be set up in such a way that parties that have people with agendas are just going to run all over this product. It's very sad. But I mean, I guess it is a product in that sense for narcissists and you know, all the all the critical role people that I've that I've seen talking do have the appearance of being horrific narcissists and and probably a lot of the critter fans are. And all I know is every time I do a video where I'm criticizing critical role in any way, I, I know that suddenly I get a ton of extra views and a ton and, and, a, and a somewhat lower percentage of, of like to dislike ratio. Right. My like to dislike ratio is usually quite good. Um, so like, not, not the last one, not this last one I did about Daggerheart, but like the one before that had like a 98%, right? The Daggerheart one had like an 84%. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, so that is probably hundreds of critters coming on here to hit dislike. <laughs> okay, I don't care. That doesn't change anything for me, all right? But there we are. So, so yeah, so they are going to have, um, ironically, the, you know, the real result of these kinds of safety tools are that the people who are the least, the least narcissistic, the least overconfident, the least psychopathic, um, are going to be more relegated to silence. It's supposedly meant to be this equity thing where unheard voices get heard, but you've noticed, I'm, I'm sure, that in, in any context of that sort of equity, it does seem like the people who actually get heard are the ones that were shouting all the time from the beginning. And it's actually meant to be a way for them to be heard and not criticized in any way. So that we, we know that's what the, the whole purpose of safety tools really is. It's not so that the quiet player will get their turn. It's so that the quiet player will shut the hell up and listen to what the, the Marxist psychopath has to say, you know? Um, so there you go. That, that last little bit there is just for the social conservatives, just because I don't want you feeling angry that I might have, like, uh, you know, given a slightly deceptive title there. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's about it for today. The only, the only thing I'm going to say apart from that is that uh, you, uh, th that once again, uh, w the baptism of fire is on its way. It is, it is heading here. We're on the next stage, right? Now, now there's not much more to go. The only place where there could be delays perhaps is drive through, but I hope not because we've like been, uh, the publisher, not, I say we, but it's not we, it's, it's the publisher, it's Matt, uh, Matt Scribe, not me, has been doing a lot of work to try to get it all done and to get, to get all the, the, eggs, the ducks in a row. So hopefully it'll be coming soon. But meanwhile, be sure to check out my other products. So, you know, stuff like my settings like Dark Albion, um, Supplements. If you've got Sword and Caravan, check out Wilderlands. It's very cheap. You can get it just in PDF or in a 
in a very thin book. Uh, that gives you all of the random encounter tables uh, for non Silk Road terrain. Uh, for you know, like when you're when you go off road, off road wilderness encounter tables. Plus, it has rules for generating families from the Silk Road cultures, well, along with things like inheritances. There's some magic items in there and some stuff like that. And you get the Eastern Dragon, which I left out of Sword and Caravan for some reason, but I put it in in Wilderland. So be sure to check that out too. Uh, or my Gonzo setting, World of the Last Sun. We just had a session on Sunday, and Bill the Elf is dead once again, but, you know, he's got a phylactery, folks, so he might come back, but who knows. Last time he was dead, he was gone for, like, two years of real time. The player had to play someone else for a very long time until they managed to, well, until somebody managed to revive him. But uh, there we are. Uh, World of the Last Sun is a great setting of Gonzo Fantasy, and it's also full of material that you can use in your own campaign if you don't want to run in my setting, but stuff that you can cut and paste into any OSR campaign with weird fantasy. And finally, especially, keep an eye out for the Pundit Files. The latest Pundit Files is out now, which is called uh, Magic of the Kunlun Mountains. And it's a collection of really great rituals uh, that are um, based on the dark magic of the black hat sects of the, of the Tibetans. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's really interesting rituals that you can apply to any OSR game. Uh, and there's you know, lots of detail and, and, and they're quite good. And <laughs> you can have that for about 350, okay? Just 350 at the Red Room Store, only at the Red Room Store. You have to go to the Red Room Store, check out all their cool stuff and check out all of my issues of uh, the Pundit Files. Pundit Files 8, I wanna say, yeah, I think it's 8. Um, is Magic of the Kunlun Mountain. So please go and, and take a look. And uh, I guess that's everything for today. Currently smoking. This is a uh, Peterson um, oversized poker with Argento Natural.